So begin in child's pose, like you see Shiana doing. Let your hips release back and down. Then come up onto your hands and your knees, and let's start to warm up the spine with some cat-cow. Inhale, arch your back, wheel your chest forward. Exhale, round your back, look back at your navel. Inhale, nice and fluid with your breath. Arch your back, wheel your chest forward. Exhale, round your back, and look back at your navel. Again, inhale, arch your back, wheel the chest forward, turn your shoulders back, roll your side chest forward, and then exhale, round it out. Then inhale, come into neutral. And from here, we'll stretch back into plank pose, one leg at a time, step back into plank without the hips twisting. <clears throat> As the side chest, the inner armpits turn forward, roll your outer shoulders back, but don't let the hips sink. Lift up on the inner thighs, activate your legs, push back through your heels, engage your core, firm the legs, stretch down through your fingers evenly. So feel the breath start to move evenly in and out through your nose. Feel the heat starting to build in your body. All right, then step up to the front of your mat and fold forward, Uttanasana, standing forward fold. Press down to your feet and rise all the way up. Take your arms up, bring your hands to your heart, Samastiti. Surya Namaskar, inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, hard Uttanasana, flat back. Step back one leg at a time and lower slowly to Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Turn your shoulders back, open up your chest. Exhale, down dog. Breathe through your nose. Step your right foot up in between your hands. Come up into warrior one. Bring your hands back down. Step back and lower slow to chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Step your left foot up to your left thumb. Turn your back heel down. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, bring your hands back to the mat. Step back and lower chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Reconnect to your breath, stretch down evenly through your hands. Just practice watching your breath flow evenly through your body. Let the belly rise and fall as you breathe. All right, then step your feet all the way up to the front of your mat. Inhale, Arda, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Press down into your feet. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale the hands to your heart. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back and lower slowly to Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog, stretch back. Step your right foot, warrior one, inhale, reach up. Bring your hands down, step back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Step your left foot, warrior one, inhale, come on up. Exhale, bring your hands down, step back and lower, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Bend your knees. And let the spine lengthen with a little bend in the knees. So you can see Cheyenne, she's got a nice bend in her knees so that the spine can get long. 
But if your hamstrings are more open, you can start to draw the thighs up and back. Then step your feet all the way up to the front of your mat. Inhale, lengthen out, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold deeply. Stretch down through your feet, rise all the way up. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale into chair pose. Bend your knees, sit your hips back. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back. And step back and lower to Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Step your right foot, warrior one. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Step your left foot, your one, inhale, reach up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Hold in your dog. So it's been a while since we did a little voiceover video. Uh, I hope that you liked the video. If you do, leave a comment. Let me know how it goes for you. You might prefer the new way that we do it, or you might like this old way. Um, a little more like mellowed out than we do it this way. So hold in your dog and breathe. All right, then step your feet all the way up to the front of your mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold deeper. Inhale into your chair. Bend your knees, sit back. Come all the way up to stand. Bring your hands to your heart. Let's do another one. Inhale. Chair pose, Surya B. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back and lower, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Step your right foot, warrior one. Inhale, raise your arms up. And then open up to your side, warrior two. Then straighten your right leg and reach out for triangle. So we'll just go right into the first flow from this Surya B. So as you hold in triangle, turn your right inner upper thigh forward so that your kneecap points straight ahead. Stretch down evenly through your feet. Then bring your hands back down to the mat. Step back and lower to Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Step your left foot, warrior one. Open up to your side, warrior two. Then straighten the left leg and reach out for triangle pose. So keep turning your left inner upper thigh forward so that the pelvis can rotate over your thigh bone. Stretch down from your legs even into your feet and lengthen through the trunk laterally. Bring your right hand back down to the mat. Step back and lower to Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Pause in your dog. Connect through the roots, through the hands and through the feet evenly. All right, prepare to move. Look between your hands, jump or step up. Inhale, Ardha, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Press down through your feet, inhale into chair pose. Come up to stand, mountain pose. Inhale into chair, bend your knees, sit your hips back. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back. Step back and lower to Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Step your right foot, warrior one. Inhale, come up and open right up to your side, warrior two. 
Let's go into modified side angle. So put the forearm down onto the thigh, take your left arm all the way over your ear. So in this pose, the back heel will want to become light. Open up your back foot into the mat, connect the heel bone, turn your right thigh out and bend your right knee all the way over your ankle. Then stretch from your belly up to your chest and reach past the fingertips on the left hand. Come back up to warrior two, bring the hands down, step back, chaturanga, inhale up dog, exhale down dog. Step your left foot, inhale come on up, open up to your side warrior two, Put your forearm down onto your thigh and take your arm all the way over your ear. All right, so again, connect into your back heel. Open up the foot evenly into the mat, then turn your left thigh out all the way and start to bend the knee over the ankle. Feel your breath move nice and even. Come back up to warrior two. Circle your hands to the mat. Step back, vinyasa, lower to chaturanga, inhale up dog, exhale down dog. Pause in your dog, just connect to your breath here. All right, now shift into plank pose. Turn your inner armpits forward, collarbones broad. Roll into the outside edge of your left foot. Take your right arm up, Vashistasana, side plank. So you wanna make sure that the left inner upper arm is turning forward and you're trying to stretch down evenly into the knuckles, especially the middle three knuckles. Spread your collarbones, but at the same time, draw your navel in and up so that your floating ribs don't push forward Connect from the hips into the heels, the inner thighs back, firm the buttocks to the heels. Change sides, right hand down. Then roll onto the outside edge of your right foot and take your left arm up. So try to open up your chest, but at the same time, try to stack your left hip right up on top of your right. The heels are active, like your feet are right up against walls. Push through your legs, push through your feet, legs active. Then slowly come back down, back to plank, slowly lower to chaturanga, inhale upward facing dog, exhale down dog. Step your right foot up to your right thumb, crescent, inhale raise your arms up. Then bring your hands to your heart. Bring your hands back down, lower to chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Step your left foot up to your left thumb, hug your left hip in. So like warrior one, but your back heel stays up, crescent. It's good to strengthen your hips, good for the legs. Stay tall through your waist, stretch past your fingers. Good, bring your hands back down. Step back and lower, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Step your right foot for crescent again. Inhale, come up. Then bring your hands to your heart. Lean your chest out of your knee and twist. So we'll add a twist this time. So keep your right hip firmed in. So you want that solid base from Crescent. As you hook your elbows, there's a tendency to round over. So instead, I want you to lengthen through your spine straight out through the midline, like there's a line running down the center of your mat. Lengthen through that line and, strength, and straighten your back leg. Bring your hands down. 
Then step into standing splits. So raise the back leg up from the inner thigh and start to fold forward over your right leg. Then lower your left leg to meet your right. Fold forward in Uttanasana. All right, now let's try an arm balance. Hook your knees into your chaturanga arms. See if you can lean into them. Then if the balance is going good, bring your feet together, bring the heels closer up to the buttocks, and then jump back to chaturanga if possible. That's a pretty gnarly transition. So if it's too much for you to jump, you can always just step back. If you are practicing jumping, make sure to curl your toes under. If you don't do it the first time, trust me, you'll never forget. All right, from down dog, step your left foot for crescent. Raise your arms up. Bring your hands to your heart. Lean your chest out over your knee and hook your elbow. So you can see there's a tendency to round once the elbow gets hooked. See how Shana leans back into alignment with her back and her ankle. There's a track from your left center ankle, your knee to your hip, the left hip hugs in, the back leg is strong, and you want a nice long line like you're seeing from your back ankle to your hips, out through your crown. Bring the hands down, standing splits, start to raise the back leg up from the inner thigh, and fold forward over your left leg. The left leg is like a pillar, so plug that left thigh bone up into the hip socket and stretch down evenly through the foot. Lower your right leg to meet your left. Let's try that crow pose again. So practice makes perfect with these. Maybe you can just lift one foot up or maybe you can lift two, two feet up and lean into your arms. Then engage your core, lift through your bandhas, engage the pelvic floor, draw the navel up and float back to chaturanga if possible or just step. Take a vinyasa and make your way back to down dog. Then from down dog, jump through to seated and come into boat pose, Navasana. So in boat pose, think of your tailbone and your sit bones like a tripod. You're balancing in between them. The low abs turn on and from the, the engagement of the low abs is how you're holding your legs. So draw the low abs in and up. The chest is open, neck is tall, spine tall. Then slowly lower yourself into Ardha Navasana. Hold there, keep the work from the low abs, and then come back up into boat pose. Then put your hands back behind you, turn your shoulders and lift into reverse plank. So in reverse plank, the shoulder heads roll back, the side chest opens, and then see how high you can lift your hips up without the side chest closing. Keep rolling the shoulders, now lengthen through the crown. Good, lower your hips back down. Navasan, knees up, arms forward. Use the support from your core to keep the spine tall as you root down to your tailbone and sit bones. Then slowly lower Ardha Navasana, straight legs if possible, bend knees if it's too much on your abs or if you start to feel it in your lower back. Keep the back of the skull reaching away from the buttocks and the buttocks out of the back of the skull. Now come back up into boat pose, set your feet down one more time. Plant the hands a foot behind you, turn your shoulders back, then start to press into your inner heels and lift your hips up. Make sure that the knees don't twist out like you're holding a block in between your thighs, squeeze in and lift up and breathe the spine longer as you open up your chest. Set your buttock back down, Last time, Navasana, knees up, arms forward. This time, if you could do straight legs without sinking in the spine, try to straighten the legs. Lower slowly, Ardha Navasana.
and then lower all the way down onto your back. Bring your legs straight, our legs up into tabletop position, hands behind your ears. Then take the legs, the right leg straight up, the left leg forward, and bring your hands up and over to the outside of the right leg. You can interlock the fingers except for the index. Change sides, go up and over to the left leg, right leg forward, but control it from your abs. Don't just flip, swing your legs. Come back up and change sides. Uh, actually, now take your arms straight up and then lift your hips up off the mat. So this is very subtle. Try to lift the hips up without the feet coming closer to your face. And then we'll go back to the twist. Hands up and over to the outside of the right leg. Change sides, up and over to the outside of the left leg. Good. Back to center, arms up, then tuck the hips, lift your hips up. Imagine you're trying to lift the ceiling with your feet, lift straight up and crunch up one more inch, and then release. Whew. If you did that right, it should feel really gnarly in the low abs especially. All right, now roll yourself back up to seated and take a vinyasa, pick up and jump back. Good, then from down dog, set your elbows down onto the mat. Lift your hips up. Now remember in that down dog earlier, I said that you could bend your knees to get the spine to lengthen. So feel free to bend the knees if you feel like your spine is rounding. The inner armpits turn forward, lift your hips up off of your elbows, and then maybe see if you can start to breathe the legs towards straight without rounding the spine. More important that you get the length in the spine. All right, now walk back into plank on your forearms. So the shoulder balances right over the elbow in this. Just like in plank on the hands, the Side chest rolls forward as the outer shoulders roll back. So that's the shoulder girdle. Now keep the legs firm. Good, then set your knees down. Sit your hips back onto your heels, just like we started. But now arms back, child's pose. Let the head rest, reconnect to your breath. All right, then come up onto your hands and knees, step the right foot up, low lunge, left knee down. You can stay there with the hands down, or if you want to get a deeper stretch, you can bend the back knee and reach back for the foot of the ankle. Just make sure that you don't feel a lot of pressure in your knee. If the knee is saying no, it's a good idea to listen to the knee. Let go of the foot and just keep your hands down. As you get more flexible, these more advanced uh, variations of the posture will start to feel more fluid, like you don't have to push or jam your body into them. So always remember in your practice, it's not about trying to jam yourself into shapes. Bring your hands back down and change sides. So we want, there, we want there to be a smooth, steady quality to the posture, to the transition, the intention that you take into the pose, that energy is coming into your body. So you don't wanna be like hostile, grabby, aggressive when you're trying to move into a pose. And if the shape is coming well, it should show on the face, it should show on the breath. The breath should be nice and fluid. The face should be calm. So there's a more, more open sattvic quality in the pose, like a more balanced quality. All right, so from that lunge, release and step back to down dog. Then jump through to seated. And lie down onto your back. All right, bridge pose, lift your hips up, interlock your hands and roll up onto the tops of your shoulders. So this is a really great pose to help to train the back body to help with your posture. So really focus on getting up onto the tops of the shoulders to open up the chest and then feel the backs of the legs engage evenly, not like one side of the hamstring or the other. Unclasp your hands and lower back down. Take a breath. Okay, now we're gonna practice the arms for Urdhva Dhanurasana. This is a great shoulder stretch. Put your hands into Urdhva Dhanurasana position, then just lift your hips. See if you can turn the elbows in without cramping the neck. 
spread at the base of the back of the neck. If the neck is healthy, try and going up onto the head and then lifting the shoulder blades. Then if you can stretch up into Urdhva from there, go ahead, stretch into the hands and feet evenly, reach the chest away from the hips and the hips away from the chest, and then slowly lower back down. Take a breath. One more time, position the hands. And this is a great stretch just to hold this and try to lift the hips up. Otherwise you can lift up onto the crown and then lift up all the way. If you have a neck situ situation like a history of cervical compression, injury, I would strongly suggest skipping that head step and just going straight up and then lower yourself back down or just avoiding that altogether. All right, now gently bring your knees into your chest. Let your lower back spread and release. Let the back of the skull and the buttocks move away from each other. Then keep the right knee hugged in, but stretch your left leg out. Open your right arm out to the side and bring your right knee over to the side. All right, if the lower back is tender, I recommend stopping the knee from going all the way to the floor. You can either hook your right big toe behind your knee or you can put a block under your knee. And then come back to center and change sides. Hug your left knee into your chest. Open the left elbow out to the side, left arm out to the side, right hand to the outside of the knee and twist. So you can see how Cheyenne is kind of keeping the knee at hip level instead of letting it go all the way to the floor. And then there's an active stretch through both hips out of the lower back so that you're not torquing from one side to the other. And then bring your knee back to center, hug both knees into your chest, and then take happy baby, reach onto the insides of the knees, grab a hold of the outsides of the feet. You can kind of rock back and forth, side to side a little. Then hug the knees back into the chest and roll yourself up to seated. All right, then stretch both legs straight out in front of you. Bring your right leg back for Janu Shirshasana. So the heel goes close to the pubis, the knee bends out to the side. Raise your arms up, inhale, and reach out over your leg. Reach down through the front of the sit bones, down into the mat and let the whole spine round evenly out over the leg. Breathe, let your breath help to create a more balanced quality in the pose for you. Come back up, bend the left knee off to the side, turn to face your right leg, inhale your arms up, and start to fold forward. And inhale, come back up and stretch. Uh, bring both legs, soles of the feet together, both knees bent back now for Baddha Konasana. Get upright over your sit bones first and see if you can get your spine nice and tall. Then see if you can lean forward like just a third of the way without the sit bones tucking under and without the knees lifting up. Then if you can go a little deeper, that's fine. But remember, you wanna stay upright on the sit bones and you don't want the knees to start to lift up towards your chest. So just feel where your limit is in the pose and be there where you feel a nice, even balanced stretch, like on a scale of one to 10, you're looking for like a five. You're not trying to like eradicate all the tension in your body in one practice. That was actually practicing that way will start to cause more tension and eventually lead to injury. All right, stretch your legs straight out, raise your arms up as you inhale and reach out for your feet, Paschimottanasana. So I hope you enjoyed um, this variation of video today. If you did, hit the like button, leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your support. Inhale, come back up. 
and let's prepare for Shavasana now. So roll down onto your back and let your head drop to the floor. Turn your palms up, let your feet fall open and just feel the points of contact with your body and the mat and the floor. And let the body drop. So it might feel like you're still trying to resist gravity a little bit. There's some areas of the body that don't want to fully let go. Just practice letting go there. And then start to tune into the sensation of the breath where you can feel the breath in the body. And just practice watching that sensation for the next few minutes. And the more you relax, feel how the more rhythmic the breath becomes. When you catch your mind starting to drift, no worries. That's just part of the meditation practice. Just bring yourself back on the next exhalation. Feel the energetic quality of the in-breath. Feel the grounding, calming sensation of the out breath. And let that rhythm take you deeper inward. We're not trying to control the breath, just watching. All right, now start to bring your awareness back, bend your knees and roll over to your right side. Press yourself up to seated. 